if you continue to screen suck, if you continue to justify to yourself the drug use and the alcohol abuse and the food abuse and the TV abuse and the infidelity and the pornography and just living a mediocre average goddamn life, then you're gonna continue to suffer with anxiety and stress and depression. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. The DM that I get most often on my Instagrams and Facebook is the DM of how do I live a meaningful, more awesome life? My life sucks. I'm stressed. I'm overwhelmed. I'm suffering. I can't tell you how frequently I get those DMs. What I can tell you is those DMs have amplified since the 2020 pandemic. And I think the reason those DMs have amplified since the 2020 pandemic is because the world has changed in a way where society feels more alone, more disconnected, and more unsure. There's something called the FUD factor. FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And when you have fear, uncertainty, and doubt, you tend to start feeling overwhelmed. You tend to start feeling anxious and you wonder how your life's gonna pan out. And for most people, and I used to do this 10 years ago, I would start spiraling on this rat race of like this hamster wheel of how are things gonna pan out for me? Am I gonna do well in life? What if I don't do well? How are things gonna end? When you have uncertainty and doubt and fear, that's how the brain works. And today, more than ever, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, the FUD factor is higher. And so it makes sense to me why people would reach out more and say, hey man, I'm suffering, I'm anxious, I'm overwhelmed, I'm having panic attacks, I'm over drinking and over stimulating and over smoking weed. And But all of those things are what? They're vices that are designed to temporarily dull out your feelings. And so while you can escape with alcohol or with drugs or with food, uh, with even TV and social media, you can temporarily escape. The reality is that your shitty life is still gonna stay shitty unless you do something about it. And so I got to thinking what these people are really asking me is, dude, what do I need to do to have an awesome life? Right. And as I started thinking, and my brain works this way, guys, my brain works in a way that I like to problem solve with the end outcome in mind. So if people are constantly telling me that they're anxious, they're overwhelmed, they have these fears and anxieties and overwhelm and uncertainties. And I go, well, what do you want? How do you want life to look for you? What is the outcome that you want? Well, I want to have an awesome life. I want to have a good life. I want to have a life of meaning. I want to have a life of fulfillment. I want to make better money. It's like, all right, cool. I get it, man. I get it. And so when you really think about it, someone that is successful and happy is probably not experiencing high levels of anxiety and overwhelm and stress and depression, right? It's when you are not happy, is when you are not successful, when you are not making money that you begin to get on that mental uh, hamster wheel and start spinning and spinning and spinning and spiraling into this state of depression and anxiety. You don't need that. And the unfortunate thing is that 86% of Americans right now, according to a recent study that was done and it was published in People Magazine, 86% of people are unhappy and unfulfilled. And so when you think about depression, anxiety, people, uh, I'm in a funk. How often do you just text a friend, hey, how's it going? I'm in a funk. I'm not doing good. I'm in a dark place. And I know that from personal experience because when you don't have a path in life, when you don't feel you have control over the outcome that you're trying to get control over, you do have a higher level feeling of overwhelm and anxiety. But we know that if you could start having some levels of success, you could start winning in your relationship, you can have a sense of significance and meaning, you can start making some money and solving your money problems, and, and, and you could start you know, feeling this, this sense of fulfillment, well, guess what? You will start getting out of your funk and getting into a path of definitiveness, right? Napoleon Hill in his book, Outwitting the Devil, talks about being definitive in your purpose. And the absence of being definitive in your purpose 
makes you a drifter where you just drift through life, trying things out, kicking the can down the road, and constantly having these feelings of stress, overwhelm, anxiety, depression, and wondering when's it all going to go away. And since it won't go away, well, what do you do? You begin to soothe and shield by using drugs and alcohol and food and television and pornography and infidelity. But what if I said that there was a drug? What if I said that there was a gateway drug, that if you use this gateway drug, that it would, it would give you a greater sense of fulfillment and meaning and significance? What if I said that there was this drug that you could take and you could start making more money, you could start seeing greater success in your life, you would be happier, your relationships would improve? What if I said that this drug would also give you better life experiences? Wouldn't you be curious what the drug is and wouldn't you want to use it? And what if I said that this drug has no negative side effects whatsoever, that you can use it indefinitely to give yourself a better life because this drug is the gateway to living an awesome life. And an awesome life is what everybody wants. And that is what this episode is about today, guys and gals. And I wanna give you the blueprint, but you have to execute on the blueprint. Otherwise, if you continue to screen suck, if you continue to justify to yourself the drug use and the alcohol abuse and the food abuse and the TV abuse and the infidelity and the pornography and just living a mediocre average goddamn life, then you're gonna continue to suffer with anxiety and stress and depression. That's just the reality of it. So I will give you the blueprint if you commit to me that you will take action on that blueprint. And here's what that drug is. That gateway drug is fitness. I'm telling you right now, if your life sucks, if your relationship sucks, if you have uncertainty in, the, in terms of making money and having happiness and you have some level of like anxiety and stress over the outcome of your life right now, there's a lot of outside circumstances that you can't control, right? You can't control how your honey feels about you. Like if your husband or your wife is just turned off by you right now and they're just not interested in you and you're like, fuck, man, I think she's going to ask me for a divorce. You can't fix her. You can't change her mind. And so in the absence of being able to control her mind or control his mind, you start getting anxious and depressed and overwhelmed. Or... If you're like, you know what, I don't know if my boss is going to fire me. I don't know if they're going to give me a raise. I don't know if they're going to be around or if they're going to merge with another company. And I'm worried about my money situation over the next year, two years, three years. You can't control what your boss is going to do. And so therefore, you're going to have stress, anxiety, overwhelm, depression about it, right? And so if you want to be able to control the things in your life that really matter so that you can have a better life, make more money, I'm telling you right now, fitness is the gateway drug. Because while all those other things, you can't control your boss, you can't control your coworkers, you can't control your kids, you can't control your spouse, you can't control your business partner, you can't control the economy right now, you can't control the inflation, you can't control the fucking Biden, you can't control anybody, you can't control the border and the 8,000 people a day that are pouring into this country, you can't control any of those elements, yet you're worrying about it, yet you're stressing over it, yet you're resharing and reposting about it as though you are doing something and all you're doing is stirring up more of those emotions that are causing stress, overwhelm, and anxiety for you. Yet the one thing you could do something about, you refuse to do. And that one thing is committing to changing you, yourself, your path in fitness. And so I want to talk to you about it. Because I believe that fitness is the gateway drug. I believe fitness is the gateway drug to being a higher performer. Fitness is the gateway drug to making more money. Fitness is the gateway drug to having a better relationship with your spouse. Fitness is the gateway drug to being a better parent. Fitness is the gateway drug for you to finally make that leap and become an entrepreneur. Or if you're an entrepreneur, for you to finally make that leap and grow the fucking balls that you need to be able to take the risks and the marketing moves that you got to make to be able to start getting profitable and not just putzing along in your business, right? Fitness is the way. And here's why. And I'm going to share this with you. Think about this. How many people on this planet are willing to wake up every single day and go to the gym or to the trail and put themselves through consistent and constant adversity without immediate results? I'd say probably less than 5% of people are willing to do that. See, the truth is when you take up running or you take up going to the gym and working out, 
if you go in the mornings or you go in the afternoon, you're not going to see results immediately. And so what working out and what fitness does is it teaches you delayed gratification. You know that if you do this over time, that you will get the results that you want. However, you also know that society has conditioned us to expect immediate gratification and results now. And so if you are willing to postpone immediate gratifications and go to the gym consistently over and over and over again without seeing immediate results, knowing that over the weeks and months and years to come that you will have a lasting results for health, fitness, a better attitude. If you're diabetic or you have high cholesterol, if you have high blood pressure, you can reverse that. Like that's a magical thing to take control over. And if you're the type of person that can imagine the person who wakes up and says, I did not sleep well, but I'm going to go to the gym anyway. I did not see results from yesterday's workout, but I'm going to go to the gym anyway. I did not, I did not get enough sleep tonight, but I'm going to go to the gym anyway. I woke up angry and in a bad mood, but I'm going to go to the gym anyway. It's raining outside and it's cold, but I'm going to go to the gym anyway. Do you see what that does in addition to, to delaying immediate gratification, it also creates discipline, doesn't it? Because the man or woman that's willing to get up every single day and go to the gym and get their exercise routine dialed in, even if and even when it's cold, it's raining, it's too hot, it's windy, the car broke down, I don't feel like it, the kids are crying, my neck hurts, I didn't sleep well, I had nightmares, I didn't sleep long enough, I overate, I underate. Even if all those things, you're still willing to go to the gym and do it, that builds some high level of fucking discipline. And so we know that if you're willing to put off immediate gratification, if you're willing to go to the gym consistently, you're going to build some serious discipline. We also know, and science has proven over and over again, that when you're working out consistently, whether it's on the trail and you're hiking and jogging or you're in the gym or you're in the pool, whatever it is that you're doing, as long as you are active and you're doing it consistently, your body is pumping out two very important happy hormones, endorphins and dopamines. Now, when you think about dopamines, like cocaine stimulates, stimulates dopamine, Right? Adderall stimulates dopamine. All of a sudden, you are getting the best quality dopamine because it is your body's natural production of dopamine during your workout. And then for a few hours after, you have that endorphin and dopamine spike where you feel good. I don't know anyone that's having an endorphin and dopamine spike from working out and at the same time is anxious and depressed. Those two fucking dogs don't hunt, period. Those dogs don't hunt. And so if you can delay gratification consistently, if you can develop discipline by doing it even if, and if you know that endorphins and dopamines are produced when you are exercising, and those are the happy hormones, those are the hormones that give you, that stimulate ideas and, and give you hope and keep you excited about life, why wouldn't you do it? And I say fitness is a gateway drug because if you do fitness consistently, you will get the results that you're after. And when you work out in the gym, and if, you, and if you run on the trail, if you swim in the pool, whatever your activity is, if you are doing it, and you are doing it past the levels of exhaustion, you are going beyond, like when it starts burning, you're still going, what does that teach? Fortitude, fortitude. And all these things are used in a relationship, aren't they? Delayed gratification discipline, consistency, fortitude. All of these things are also used in business, aren't they? If you want to make more money, you got to delay gratification. You think you're going to start a business now, do run a marketing campaign and all automatically become profitable and become a millionaire? No, you know that being an entrepreneur means you got to eat a lot of shit sandwiches until you can create the outcome that you want. You have to solve through a lot of problems and overcome a lot of obstacles and fight against competition and recession and economic downturns and taxation from the government until you can produce the outcome that you want. So the same traits and skills that you would use in the gym for your personal own fitness program are the same traits and skills you need to be able to develop a better relationship, to be able to build a better business, to be able to become consistent in the things that you want to achieve in life. 
And then there's the other thing, something called bilateral stimulation. And if you've ever exercised, then, you, then you've experienced what I'm about to share with you. See, bilateral stimulation is when the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere of your brain start working together to solve your problems. In fact, in, in therapy, in psychology, there's a modality called EMDR. EMDR is when the therapist will hand you these two little things to hold on to, and these things are connected with the wire to a little device in the therapist's hands, and they just go tick, tick, tick. It's not a shock, it's not anything like that, it just ticks, right? Imagine left hand tick, right hand tick, left hand tick, right hand tick. And what it does is it creates bilateral stimulation, gets the right and the left side of the brain to start working together. And you've experienced this before, like if you're a swimmer and you're swimming, right, and you have this rhythmic style of swimming, all of a sudden you start having this, this creative thoughts, the creative juices start flowing. If you're a runner, call it the runner's high, right, you're running and all of a sudden you start solving a lot of your problems, or if you're a biker, you're biking, if you're in the gym, you're lifting and you're doing those repetitions consistently over and over again. And anytime you do something rhythmically and repetitiously, you begin to recruit your left and right side of the brain. And when you start getting those creative thoughts when you're exercising and when you start solving a lot of your life's problems in the gym or on the trail, it's not by accident. That is called bilateral stimulation, as in you are stimulating both sides of your brain to solve the problem that you were unable to solve just by sitting there and trying to journal or just by sitting there on your laptop or your iPhone scrolling through shit and, and what was me and feeling bad and guilty about yourself and, and wondering how you're going to solve your problems. You're never going to solve your problems sitting there and screen sucking. You're going to solve your problems by taking action. So you see that fitness is the gateway drug because in addition to pumping your body with endorphins and dopamine, it teaches you delayed gratification. It teaches you discipline. It teaches you self-motivation. It teaches you consistency. It teaches you to go and do it no matter what, even if you don't see the results immediately, knowing that through faith in what you're doing, the results will come. That is the same level of traits and skills that you need for a relationship to thrive and for a business to thrive and for your fulfillment to take off. But so often people quit in life. And so they begin to quit on their relationships. Till death do you part, it's, it's, it's not even taken serious anymore. Like I'm surprised that wedding vows still have till death do us part, considering over 50% of people get divorced. And I believe the reason people get divorced is not for any other reason other than they quit too early just like they quit on their workouts, just like they quit on their business idea, just like they quit on in their relationships. Like that, that, that's, that's it. I didn't see results. It requires too much work. I'm not willing to do it and I quit. But if you can start focusing on your fitness and if you can see fitness as the gateway drug and you say, I'm gonna take this fucking floppy body that I have, these fucking titties that I have, this fucking gelatinous midsection that I have, I'm gonna burn off this fat and I'm gonna replace it with muscle. And I'm gonna be a walking fucking anatomical chart and you do it long enough and you eat right and you train right and you take your supplements and you do it even if and even when you don't feel like it when it's cold when it's hot when it's overwhelming when you're sore when you're not you didn't sleep well then you take that same savage fucking attitude of transforming your mind and body and you apply it to your relationship because your relationship will have resistance and just like you didn't put the barbell down when you were lifting just like you didn't stop running when you got sore, just like you didn't stop swimming when the lactic acid built up in your body, you pushed through. When your relationship starts hitting potholes and adversity and discomfort, instead of throwing in the towel, you may just very likely may stay in the fight and problem solve through it, knowing that on the other side of this consistently Staying in this relationship is delayed gratification, a better, a better, more disciplined marriage, a better, more disciplined business. A, a, a attitude of fortitude is what is developed. And then think about this, the willpower that it takes to get fit. Because you and I both know you can go to the gym once a day for an hour, but it's not gonna get the results that you're after unless you wanna be a 
strong, fat fuck, you're not going to get the results of getting lean and looking like a beautiful anatomical chart unless you do the other 23 hours right, which is what you put in your pie hole, what you eat. Again, I share this with you because think about the willpower, the planning and the preparation that it takes to make sure that you organize your meals for the day, whether it's meal prep, whether it's supplements, whether it's ordering something through, through nutrition solutions or through icon meals, but having your food prepped so that you don't make an emotional decision and eat a fucking Jolly Burger or whatever the fuck it is that you eat and stuff in your pie hole or a fucking burrito with extra sauce and cheese that ends up putting so much fucking calories around your fucking body that shit just hangs, they're all gelatinous like. And unless you wanna be a fat fuck, you're gonna have to exercise planning and preparation, which does what? Creates willpower. The willpower to say no to the foods that are bad for you. The willpower to go out with your friends and make the right decision when it's time to order food. The willpower to not make that emotional eating decision late at night when your guard is down. That's planning and preparation. And ironically, a marriage, a relationship, a business thrives when willpower is put in place and the leader uses planning and preparation to make that relationship or business work. And so if you've ever wondered what does Bedros mean when he says that fitness is the gateway drug, I'm here to tell you that's exactly what I mean. You cannot control your spouse, your kids, your boss, your business partner, the economy, the Biden, any of that shit. What you can control is you. And if you get good at controlling your fitness, adding muscle, building endurance, burning fat, eating right, planning and preparing your meals, you will begin to build discipline at a very high level, fortitude at a very high level. You will become a consistent motherfucker who produces results. And if you could produce results here in this beautiful temple that you carry, then you can create everything else that your mind imagines. Because your physiology, your body is that first domino that falls and the gateway opens up and you go, man, if I could transform my ugly fat body into this fucking beautiful godlike masterpiece, then I can do my part in this relationship. And trust me, if you do your part in the relationship, if your partner has any ounce of care for that relationship, they will do their part. And then if you do your part in your business, your business will turn the corner as well. So make no mistake about it, friends. Fitness is the gateway drug to, to your higher self, to an awesome life, to, to, to rid yourself of anxiety, stress, overwhelm, depression, because you are living a life that's unfulfilled, because you are living a animalistic life that you operate out of impulse currently, whatever feels good. You operate out of emotions, whatever feels good I'm going to eat, whatever feels good I'm going to do. And if you start operating out of a place of discipline, consistency, fortitude, and willpower, you will begin to pump out more dopamines, more ephedra, uh, ephedrine, more <laughs> endorphins. And what you'll find is that you create better results and outcomes in your life. So if there's any one thing that I could leave you with today, it is to become more consistent in your fitness journey to develop the abs, to fucking develop the endurance, to burn the fat and to build the muscle and then watch all the other dominoes of awesomeness fall in your life and you will produce the outcome that you're looking for. Guys, thank you so much for listening and watching this episode of the Bedros Koulian Show. As always, I appreciate you, I love you and I'm rooting for you. Peace.